Uh, I've also heard once Jack Maller say that crypto, uh, sorry, that Bitcoin is very different than other cryptocurrencies because it has this component of a proof of work. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you you know more about that or if you can expand on this on this idea. Yeah, I mean, it's really important um, that Bitcoin has this tie to energy. And energy is something that none of us can print. Um, no government can have a monopoly over energy and, and sort of print more Bitcoin or manipulate the network in any way. And that's really important because the, the point that Jack actually makes, which is a brilliant one, is that if we trade our time, which is really our scarcest asset on, on this planet, for something that someone can just print out of thin air, then they can control us, right? And they control um, how much value that we have. And that's wrong. Um, that's that's morally wrong. It's ethically wrong. And it disenfranchises so many people. And that's what we've seen. And that's what we've seen happen. And so uh, we need something that is outside of that system that no one can manipulate, no one can control, that is tethered to something um, that is true and measurable. And that is energy. Um, so Bitcoin, the proof of work, these computers that are mining Bitcoin around the world, they're essentially taking part in what's a very sophisticated lottery. They are literally guessing numbers. And the proof is you expended the energy for the chance. Now, most computers, you know, they're not going to get that one block. They're not going to win, but they're still expending the energy. They're trying Um and and so I feel like that also reflects in our life. You know, like the more that we put into something, the more of our energy that we put into something, we see results and they compound. And I, I think it's important because so much today, I think our value, um, pr the prices of things, they've been totally skewed and manipulated to the point that value no longer accrues to where it was actually created. Value accrues to whoever is closest to the money printer. And it's not fair. And so no wonder you have a whole huge amount of people regardless of which team they decide to be on politically that are just saying this isn't fair and I've worked hard and I've played by the rules and I can't get ahead anymore so we need something that empowers them and and bitcoin really gives you back your time it's it's measured by something real um it's measured by something that none of us can control and so the energy component is very strong because once once you remove the energy component you have to introduce something else and so this is what Lynn Alden has articulated beautifully in the other tokens, right? They're not proof of work. They're proof of stake, largely. That means you introduce governance. Um, you introduce a, a hierarchy where certain people benefit, certain people make decisions. Um, if you have more to stake, you can earn and verify more. That replicates our current system. Our current fiat is really proof of stake. And uh, and and Bitcoin is is so beautifully different and outside of that system. So the proof of work aspect is is really, really important. Okay. So you're saying that by design, Bitcoin has this energy component. And if you also add to this probably the, the fact that there are only 21 million Bitcoin that will, be, that will be ever mined. So the scarcity aspect as well. Together, these are a perfect uh, antidote to inflation, right? This is kind of the key message here. Yeah, there's no one yeah. who can manipulate or uh, change the network's monetary policy, which is fixed. And that 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 um, supply and that programmatic policy is etched into the code and everyone can verify the code. It is open source for everyone, but no one can change it. It is resistant to any sort of manipulation or influence, which is really, really um, powerful. And Satoshi was brilliant in many ways because he was able to achieve through creating, um, you know, proof of work and the difficulty adjustment and combining all of these um, cryptographic technologies in order to allow us to truly reach consensus in a decentralized way, in a way where you don't need trust and you can send value from one person to another and everyone can verify that that transaction took place in an honest way. Um, and that is so different from our current system, right? Our current system is one where you have to have an intermediary, you have to get permission, you often have to wait. There are people, to, you know, there are toll takers along the way that are all trying to get their slice. Bitcoin kind of, um, you know, 
returns us to the most purest form of exchange. It is truly, you know, what 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 is the price and what is the supply and you can make a fair trade. And I think that that's something that we haven't had in a very, very long time. And you've actually created the ability to essentially do the same thing as me exchanging with you cash, right? If I hand it to you, now you have it. It was a pure exchange, peer to peer. Now you can do it online in a way that's decentralized to 8 billion people, allowing them to interact with one another and and create circular economies and and exchange value with one another. I think it's absolutely just incredible. And um, you know, some people when they're first learning about Bitcoin, they get the question of, well, what if I were to amass amount of, of uh, a tremendous amount of energy? Right, I plug into a hydro dam. I suddenly have so much power and energy, and I'm contributing it to the network. And I could probably guess more. I can guess more, which means I can mine more Bitcoin. Well, there there's Satoshi's difficulty adjustment because the difficulty adjustment actually changes the difficulty of um, of that number that they're all trying to guess so that the more computers, the more hashing power, the more energy that's on the network trying to mine Bitcoin, the harder it is to solve it. And so it always self-regulates to those like 10-minute blocks approximately. And when a bunch of computers fall off the network and there's less mining activity like we saw with the China mining ban in 2021, then it gets a little bit easier to solve. So the 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 software actually self-regulates itself so that it's always um, those 10-minute increments and so that that policy remains in place, whether there are a billion computers mining Bitcoin or just 10. I mean, it's incredible. Okay. 